Hello and welcome back to another thrilling episode of our brand of horror, Movie Reviews. And just in case you forgot, I'm Slash Sister Jen. Hey Jen. <laughs> and I'm Slash Sister Hallie. We've got an episode that I've slept on for the past decade and I, I don't know why. I cannot believe you waited this long to see this movie. <laughs> yeah, well you know, too many horror films and not enough time. Well, the struggle is real. I feel that one on a oh, uh, personal level. 100%. Yeah, well, you know what? I've watched it for this review, okay? And I'm ready to talk about this wicked film. Good. Well, let's get down to the brass tactics and discuss the next film. Yes. And to take things one step further with you, that your next comment, uh, this film that we're talking about is actually your next. Your next? Which came out in uh, 2011. Wait, I thought it came out in 2013. Well, you would be right, except for the fact that it actually did come out in 2011. It premiered at an international film festival in Toronto, where it gained a huge buzz. Lionsgate swooped in, backed it, do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> backed it, and it came out in wide distribution in 2013. Okay, so, well that makes a lot more sense, and I guess I didn't know that. Yeah, it, But it does happen a lot with independent films, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. It happens a lot more than what people think. Uh, but all of this is beside the point. So, let's next. get into it. I'm next. You're next. I'm You're next. next. You're next. The film opens with a couple, Talia and Eric Carson having sex. Afterwards, Talia walks around the house in like a t-shirt, you know, in like a button down with her boobs hanging out everywhere. I mean, we wouldn't have a good horror movie if it didn't start out with sex and boobs, right? I mean, you know, they're just paying homage to the movie. You know, we got to, we got to. Uh, Talia walks around the house and notices the motion sensor light comes on outside. Um, after the shower, well, she, first she turns on some music and puts it on repeat. Um, but after a shower, Eric comes out and finds your next written on the wall in blood. In Talia's blood, by the way. Uh, her body is lying dead on the ground. And an attacker wearing a lamp mask attacks Eric and kills him with a machete. Machete! <laughs> now we are moving on to a completely different set of people. Different couple altogether. Yeah, diff well, I mean, just different people in yes. general. Erin accompanies her boyfriend, Crispin Davison, to his family reunion at their vacation home in rural Missouri. I actually did not know that this took place in Missouri. I didn't realize it was Missouri until we started, like, researching for it, too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, really? Huh. Go figure. Pre present are Crispin's parents, Aubrey and Paul, which... When they arrived, they noticed that the door was ajar to their house. Well, that, not ajar, just unlocked. Well, I don't I, think it was open, was it? I thought, I thought, he, was it open? I, I thought he said, like, the, the caretaker might have forgotten to shut it. Or yeah, something, like, something that. like that. I mean, they've had people coming in and out of the house. Because when they when they walk in, you can clearly see that the house has not been lived in for a while. There are the white tarps covering everything, which is to say that it's, like, in storage. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Like, they don't live there full-time. It's definitely, like, a, a, a summer house, house, a summer house, house whatever. Like right. Yep. Uh, along with them is Kristen's older brother, Drake, and his wife, Kelly, Kristen's younger siblings, Felix and Amy, and their partners, Z and Tariq, respectively. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> what a ragtag bunch of people, to be completely honest oh, here. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. Like, you've got... Um, Drake, who takes pleasure in making fun of Crispin and calling him fat and making fun of him for being probably the fat of the fat one of the siblings when they were kids. Now, I come from a family of four, uh, very similar to the family of four in this family. And I can attest to that dinner time fighting that happens on a regular basis within families. Um, you know, just the whole, the whole group is very different from each other. Each one of the siblings is very different from each other. You've got Crispin, who is a um, a college professor. You've got Drake, who I don't know what he does, but I assume he's probably in some kind of finance. I don't know. That's just the kind of person that he comes off as, is like some hoity-toity banker or something. Um, then you've got Felix, who... I, we don't even know anything about Felix. Other than other than quad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you've got Amy, who really is just like this super high-strung, very... 
she comes off as pretty sweet, but she doesn't get a whole lot of screen time. Um, anyways, so yeah, it's just, it's a, it's quite a group, but during dinner, they're all eating dinner and they're, they're there, they're all there to celebrate mom and dad's anniversary. That's yes. what they all came yep. together to the house for. Um, but during dinner, a crossbow is shot through the, a, a cross from a crossbow is shot through the window a bolt. and a, is a that bolt. What, a bolt? A, they're called a bolt. bolt. Okay. A, a bolt. An arrow. Bolt. Yes. A bolt. Either way, um, is shot through a window and hits Drake right in the back. Um, and, oh, no, actually. No. Uh, the first one, yeah. Tariq. Tariq, who is played by filmmaker Ty West in a role where he plays an independent filmmaker. So he's basically playing himself, himself which is hilarious. Uh, Ty West is the, the genius behind um, a lot of movies, but most recently X and Pearl and Maxine, which is coming pretty soon. Right, which um, is the Mia Goth trilogy. Yep, exactly. Um, but anyway, so he's he uh, is shot straight in the forehead with a bolt from <laughs> from a crossbow, and then another one comes in shooting Drake in the back, and as he's trying to protect his mother. Yes, yes. And shortly after, uh, they all try to use their cell phones and realize that their cell phones, nobody's cell phones work. Somebody has deployed Jammed a jammer. Their, yes, somebody has deployed a jammer. Somehow, some way, they decide to send Amy outside and she runs full tilt towards the doors and they open them up last second only for her neck to get caught on a garrote wire. Yeah. Which slices into her throat. Not killing her instantly, but oh, she but bleeds what out. What a in the, scene you know, that was! That was that, that was a, that was almost hard to watch. It seriously. was, yeah, like the way it goes into her, and she just like full on. But the problem that I have with it is, you know, someone's outside firing crossbow bolts into the windows. Why? Why the send somebody fuck? running like a banshee through the front door to exactly. get to the cars? Exactly. Exactly. I understand. Okay, if you run full tilt, you may not get hit, but why take the fucking chance? Yes. But she ran full tilt straight into a wire and right. sliced her throat up and real good. Aaron is briefly attacked by attack an attacker in a tiger mask in the kitchen, but she fights off she fights <clears throat> sorry, she fights him off as he escapes through the kitchen door. Paul puts Aubrey to bed, but I'm still trying to figure that one out, but okay, <laughs> yeah, whatever. I still don't get that. Like I, I said this to you right before we started recording. Like my uh, my partner said to me at some point while we were watching this film, these people ain't acting right. I'm like, a lot of these people just are not acting right. And one of the things that is is very odd to me is that Aubrey goes upstairs. Aubrey, who is played by Barbara Crampton, who I love. Icon. Poor icon Barbara Cam Crampton. Um, but she just goes upstairs and like lays down for a while after her kids have been... Well, I mean, she was screaming very hysterically. Yes, she was. She but... Was. And we're made to believe, um, I mean, Crispin makes a comment at the beginning that his mom can't drink because she's on medicines. Um, it's, it's my interpretation of that is that she's on some kind of mental health medicines, That's probably um, good whether it be for assessment. depression or anxiety or something else. Um, that was my understanding was that it was probably that. And if so, if she does have problems with her mental health, I can see why she probably needed to lie down after that. Irregardless, she lies down, uh, only to be attacked by an intruder wearing a fox mask who was hiding underneath their bed, which means that that door being open at the very beginning, and it, was, it was a huge fucking red flag. Yeah, and she did say, like, I hear somebody upstairs. Mm -hmm. That's like when Crispin and uh, Aaron get there to the house, mom is in the driveway crying because mm -hmm. she swears mm -hmm. there was somebody in the house. But he murders Aubrey with uh, another machete. Machete to the neck. Right. right. No, it was in the forehead. Oh, was it? Yeah, he's pulling it down on her forehead. Oh my god. Leaving the words, you're next, written in blood on the wall. I have to, I have to say, um, Aaron yes. is my favorite character in this because yes. she is smart. Yes, she's the only smart one in the whole bunch, it seems like. Uh, she's, it was very refreshing sitting down watching this and seeing someone actually taking charge and, and trying not acting to like a complete and utter jack. Glittering idiot. Yeah. 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 
Well, Kelly uh, discovers Fox Max, uh, uh, Fox Mask, and panics, fleeing the house. She just literally just goes running out, uh, running to Eric's house nearby, the, the neighbors that we were talked about at the very beginning of this uh, video. Um, upon discovering Eric's corpse, she realizes that he's dead. Uh, Lamb Mask, which is different from Fox Mask, we're going to differentiate these, the, in, the assailants by the masks that they're wearing. Um, so we've got Fox Mask and now Lamb Mask. Lamb Mask throws her through the window and kills her by driving an ax into the side of her head. Interesting side note, uh, Lamb Mask is actually played by the screenwriter for this film. Is it really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Love that. Crispin leaves the house to look for help. I guess they, they kind of made this, this assumption that Kelly made it out. At least, I think when Crispin leaves, Kelly is still missing. They haven't seen her body yet. Yeah, well, I, they, they don't, they find her body later, yeah. obviously, well, <laughs> sort of. But still, he, he leaves the house looking for help, knowing that they're still out there. I, I'm still thinking this is stupid. Tiger Mask attacks Aaron with an axe, but she crushes his skull, but first kicks his ass in the junk. Yep. And then beats his ass to death with a meat tenderizing hammer. Yes, which is honestly like so. It's such a great scene. Like just see, like as she towards the end, as you know she's killing him. I remember being like, yes, get, yeah, yeah, get him, get him. I just like I oh, I think at some point I'm pretty sure that was the point where I started being like, oh, Aaron's the shit. Like she's not just like smart. She's like. She's the shit. Like, she's gonna teach these guys a lesson. Like, this is no joke. So, uh, Paul ends up finding sleeping bags, food wrappers, and bottles of urine in the closet, indicating that the killers had been staying in the house for some time and waiting for this whole situation to start. Um, he finds Felix and Z and starts to tell them, only for Fox Mask to come up and slit his throat with a machete. It was the dad that got his throat slit with a machete. That's right. Mm -hmm. I knew there was somebody that got their throat slit with a machete. <laughs> it is then revealed that Felix and Z hired these masked assassins to murder their entire family so they could collect their inheritance. Yeah. Could you imagine, like, deciding, I'm going to have my parents killed, my siblings killed, like, because I want money? I mean, the Menendez brothers. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, Lamb Mask finds Tiger Mask's corpse. God, these are hard to say. They are hard to say. Tiger Mask's corpse and flips the dinner table because... That's his brother. That was his actual brother. Like which real life brother. Which Felix was like, well, I knew you guys served together, but I didn't know he was actually your brother. Yeah. Yeah, well, while Felix is having his siblings killed off and his parents killed off. Right. Like, you would think that he would have some kind of He has no sympathy to that. Anything. No, he has absolutely zero remorse for what he's doing. He discovers a wounded Drake hiding, but retreats after Aaron stabs him with a screwdriver. Yeah. Uh, so, next, uh, Aaron nail traps the house. So, she gets, she gets Z to help her. Because at this point, she so does not know. So now we're going know. on full Home Alone on this one. Yeah, for sure. Um, at this point, she doesn't know that Z and Felix are in on it. Mm -hmm. She thinks that they're still being targeted, targeted. as well. Um, so she and Z take boards and hammer nails through them and lay them outside of the window so that if someone comes in, another intruder comes in, they will hopefully Injure step themselves on those on. nails. Yep, yep. Um, she also explains to Z that she grew up on a survivalist compound, which is why she knows all of these combat and survival skills. Um, next we see Felix and Drake in the basement. And, um, I mean, at this point, Drake is kind of a mess. He's been through a lot. He was one of the first people to be injured. Yeah. He, he had the crossbow bolt into his shoulder. He ripped it out. Yeah. But he did have some pretty hefty drugs. Yes, he did. <laughs> Which makes him kind of funny as a character in general. Um, but regardless, uh, Felix ends up stabbing his brother with 
multiple different instruments. Uh, I think there was probably like six different things sticking out of his chest by the mm -hmm. time he was dead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, screwdrivers, knives, whatever he could find in the basement, basically. Basically. On the upper floor, Aaron comes across Paul's body. She jumps through a window to escape Fox Mask, injuring her leg. I'm sorry, that piece of glass that she pulled out of her leg was entirely too fucking Ooh. large for that for the, bit of yes, window. Agreed, agreed. But there was a, I have to tell you guys this, this is the funniest thing. Right before she jumps out that window, she sees your next on the wall. Like she walks into the bedroom, sees your next on the wall. And my partner looks at me and he was like, oh, baby girl, I think it's your turn. You're next. I was like, no, no, no. She's our final girl. And then she promptly jumps out the window. I was like, yeah, like a proper final girl should. <laughs> I mean, it, it does happen quite frequently in horror films. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my most, the one that like really sticks out to me is Sally Hardesty in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. where she just full on jumps. She went jumped out of multiple windows. Right. Um, but anyways, she jumps out of a window and... Lamb Mask is injured by one of the, yeah. by one of the boards that Aaron set up with the nail traps in him. While hiding, Aaron overhears an argument between Felix Z and Fox Mask and Lamb Mask, where it's revealed that the Lamb Mask and Tiger Mask were brothers. Yep. Yep. Um, it, it, this is the point where Aaron realizes that Felix and Z are behind everything, too. So it's kind of this moment of, oh, shit. You mean to tell me these people are the ones that have been doing this shit to us? Um, I, this, I, and I think, personally, at this point, she has decided to just murk everybody in yep. the fucking house. Yep. I, I, I honestly much. feel like that. Yep. Yep. Um, at this time, her cell phone actually beeps. She's At this point, she's hiding in, like, a little window, sort of, like, cutout sort of thing that was covered by curtains. Um, she's bandaging herself up, making sure that her leg is taken care of after she pulled that giant piece of glass out of it. Um, that is that is probably one of the most... It's one of the more ridiculous parts of this film. Yes, yes. One of the more uh, unbelievable parts of the film. Um, but while she's hiding, uh, she... Um, the alert goes off saying that 911 received her emergency text. Um, and that sound alerts the killers as to where she's at. And she's actually able to ambush Lamb, Lamb Mask and kill him, stabbing him in the head. Which is, I, I, I love how she ambushes him too. She just straight up punches him in the face. Yes. She's like, she's like waiting for him and she's standing there and it's just like, she just gets him. I love it. I Quick love Aaron. Juke. I love Aaron love her so much. Realizing she can't outrun Fox Mask with a wounded leg, Aaron sets a trap at the front door where an axe would fall and kill anyone who opens the door. Okay, so now we've gone Home Alone and Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, on yeah, for sure. You know what I have to say that I really, actually really love about this film is that it is very much in one location. Like, somebody goes out of the house, they almost immediately come right back in. Like, everybody is like, you know, like, Aaron jumps out of the window and then promptly walks right back into the house. Like, mm -hmm. comes back in through the downstairs window and hides herself inside the house, which honestly is really smart. <laughs> and, and what's really interesting about that is the house that they shot in was actually an abandoned house that had been abandoned for 12 years. Wow. They really did a good job of, like, dressing it up. Yeah, and, yeah, making it look good. Fox Mask enters through a window, so Aaron lures him to the basement where she blinds him with a camera, which I thought was fucking brilliant. Not Beautiful. only does she blind him with the camera, she breaks the light bulbs. Not, yeah, uh, not every single off, one, every single one off. as she's going, yeah. So he'll crunch the glass so she can you know, identify she can where he's him. at. Then the camera blinds him, and then she beats him to death with a log. <laughs> It's it's yeah. one of the better moments of yeah. this film. I mean, seriously. you can actually like hear his skull cracking under the sound of the log. Mm -hmm. It is oof, oof. So Z and Phil Felix end up attempting, attempting to kill Aaron themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she kills Felix by shredding the top of his head with a broken blender. Yeah, she, like, that turns it on. Yeah, that, that, that shit was. It won't work. It wouldn't no, work I out. know it wouldn't work. It wouldn't turn on. I mean, when, on it and whatever, when have you ever but... done a blender to actually crush ice, let alone <laughs> rip through bone? <laughs> Either way, it's it's still even if she 
the just the force of her like the, I mean that, that should have killed him his head, that should have killed him um I know she wouldn't have been able to turn that thing on but it's pretty great for the movie I mean it was funny and, I, I laughed yeah yeah then she ends up stabbing Z in the top of the head with a knife and Felix's cell phone rings right afterwards and Aaron answers it without saying a word and just listens believing he is speaking to Felix Crispin reveals his involvement in the scheme. Uh-huh. Aaron confronts him when he returns, and Crispin explains that she was never meant to be targeted. No, she was supposed to be the, uh, the, the, the eyewitness. The eyewitness. Along with the, Z. Yeah. Yeah. After he attempts to bribe her into staying silent, I'm sorry. I know. Like, she's going to take, I could get you $500,000 by the end of the month. She kills him in disgust by stabbing him in the neck, and then the eye. Yeah, so right afterwards, a police officer shows up and shoots Aaron. It's literally like seconds. It's like she stabs him, and then she gets shot in the shoulder. Um, Because, obviously, the cop just saw her kill Crispin. Mm -hmm. And after calling for backup, he attempts to enter the house and falls victim to Aaron's front door trap. Which basically is that big axe swinging right into his head. Um, just as the movie cuts to a blood splatter that says, you're next. And that is where this film ends. It sure is. I would love to see the fallout of what happens afterwards. Uh, if she is, if the, like the police believe her story yeah. or whatever, because with a police officer being killed, I mean, it's highly questionable. Right. Right. Um, obviously she was shot by the police officer, so she's going to have to explain why the police officer would shoot her. Mm-hmm. Um, he called for backup, so there is more backup coming, thank mm-hmm. goodness. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, she did try to stop him. She was like, wait, 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 but no, there was nothing she could do about it. Nope. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the end of the film. Um, and it, then it just cuts to the music that's been playing nonstop at the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> which was, which was incredibly funny because it's a more upbeat song. Yeah. And you just don't hear that. In, yeah. In a slasher it like was this. pretty great. Um, for me personally, this is a huge bloody machete up. I was telling Hallie um, that I it, that this is one of my favorite home invasion movies, and she definitely thinks that I have too many favorites, and I do. I have too many favorites, but I realized that it's not actually my favorite. It's it's my favorite home invasion horror movie, but only because I don't really like home invasion movies that much, it's, and it's, it's not. not- technically a home invasion horror it's either. really not no it's i mean this is very much kind of in the vein of like scream with like the motives aren't the same but the, it's it's very similar styled motives yes like they're doing it for for personal gain not for vendettas right. or anything like that you right know? right um so yeah for me it's a it's a big old bloody machete up. it's a bloody machete up for me i can't believe it i i waited 12 years to watch this, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm glad I finally watched it, and you know, now you have our opinions on it, and hopefully you'll pick this up and think it's a good movie, too. So with that, we are going to get that. The fuck out of here. The fuck out of here. <laughs> well, what do we want to do next, Hallie? I think we should get in to some psychological thrillers. You think we should get in, or you think we should maybe get out? Let's get out. Let's get out. Why not? We are going to see Mr. Peel's version of horror. His very first, this was his first horror film. Like before this, he was almost exclusively known for comedy with, mm-hmm. with Key and Peel. Right. And right. Mold- I mean, he'd been around on the scene for a long time, but this is his first foray in directing. He and wrote, directed, produced uh, this entire film himself. And. I can honestly say that he is probably one of the more talented people in the Absolutely. horror genre. Especially right now. Right. Literally within the past, because this came out in 2017. Yep. So the past... Six eight, years. Six, six, six years. years. Yep. He's been, like, he, his... He's been he's at had the top after him. Yep. For he really sure. has. For sure. So come back here in one week's time when we get into Get Out. Until then, make sure you slash that subscribe button. Stab the like button. And ring a the gray bell so you don't get buried alive and can stay up to date on all of our videos. And we will see you all in the afterlife. afterlife.